Hey guys, it's Matt Walk, and today we're going to be talking about mono black control. We're going to be talking about more cool stuff that we got from uh, our good friend Modern Horizons 2. What a nice, sweet, interesting set. And uh, we got some cool stuff. We got some cool stuff. Uh, of course, not the least of which was Cabal Coffers, which was like a, a double hitty thingy. Um, we got a Coffers reprint, right? This card was way too expensive in uh, um, for for EDH, but also it uh, introduced, of course, Cabal Coffers to Modern. Um, this is great. I mean, this is sweet. Uh, this card is awesome. It is super fun to play with. Uh, it creates a very particular kind of deck, a particular style of play uh, that probably pretty much wouldn't be um, quite good without it, or at least probably not good enough. But anyways, uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about this deck, and this should be pretty sweet, pretty fun, and pretty exciting. All right, so uh, one of the nice things we can uh, do right with our mono black control deck is play the sweetest combo of all time, of course. Uh, the Coffers uh, Urbor combo, of course, this is a popular um, combo uh, in, in EDH because it's very difficult to disrupt, being both lands. Um, it mana fixes for you, gives you all sorts of other random interesting things you can do too when you turn your opponent's lands into swamps, uh, but also um, it just obviously turns on coffers, coffers counts itself, so it boosts itself up and is just awesome. It lets, you know, coffers early game also tap for just a black instead of having to, to activate it or whatever. So um, very cool, very sweet. I like this quite a bit. This is a sweet combo. And of course, because it's modern, we don't have to worry about um, stuff like Wasteland or whatever. There's like Field of Ruin, but Field actually replaces your land. So it's like not that big of a deal, right? Especially early game. Like it, it's hard to hard to really like screw them over with Field of Ruin because it's like if it's early game, it's like whatever, you're not activating anyways. If it's late game, well, then they probably already used it once or something. Uh, so not that, not that great there, not that scary, but, uh, so yeah, Urborg Coffers, that's a, could be a big part of this. It also lets us play, uh, lots of colorless lands. Um, well, maybe not a lot, but it lets, lets us play some, so that's very good. Uh, Urborg also good with the, uh, Black Castle, so that's nice. But we also got another interesting card, a Profane Tutor, the, uh, Suspend Demonic Tutor, quite good uh this is great this will help you whether just suspending it on turn two and getting your you know another land finding your urborg's coffer thing if you need that um or just hitting your third land drop or fourth land drop i should say in general um tutors for your one ofs i mean and it's great you can like tutor for like a damnation and then cast it on turn four that's pretty good so uh yeah good stuff there um, this thing is is sweet. It's a little. Uh, <laughs> I feel a little better playing Profane Tutor than than uh, Diabolic Tutor, right? So yeah. Um, but yeah, basic basic plan for this deck is to kill everything and kill it good. So uh, hand destruction uh, as well as um, creature removal and things like that. Very good. Yeah, and uh, the, the nice thing about being mono black is that you can play a lot of utility stuff. So we'll see a lot of that. Obviously playing castle, things like that. Um, good stuff there. And of course, deck is very customizable. So good stuff all over, all around, all over. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so looking at the mana base real quick, um, what we got is uh, our, our good friend, uh, Fetchlands. That's right, Fetchlands. Why are we playing Fetchlands? Mostly just to turn on um, a Fatal Push, right? To give us a little bit more um, be able to, to revolt it, right? So that's that's kind of nice. And they're basically like that. That doesn't really cost much to include. You may lose a life or two, um, but for the most part, it gives it makes your fatal push a little better, which is pretty good. Um, and then of course, Mistress Factory is another win condition or just another blocker. It's quite good. And of course, with our good friend uh, Urborg, it's easy peasy. Turns it turns it into a swamp. Lets it tap for black. That's great. Um, I'm not sure if 25 lands is best or if we can just cut a land especially because we are playing expedition map expedition map being able to fetch either your draw engine right like something like castle lockthwain or uh as well as something like um 
uh, like factory, <laughs> you just need like another uh, uh, attacker or again, fetching either part of the Urborg coffers thing or whatever. Um, map is pretty good, pretty good. So again, a lot of the same stuff that it does like in Tron. Um, and then of course we just have typical mono black stuff, Thoughtseize, Inquisition, Push. I mean, maybe depending on what kind of metagame you're looking at, you might want to play um, Duress instead of like Inquisition or Thoughtseize or whatever, uh, depending on, on what what things end up looking like. But Duress is of course another uh, decent option. Um, and then yeah, Damnation. It's nice to have another Wrath effect, especially being able to Profane Tutor on turn two into a turn four dam Damnation if needed. Quite good. Um, it's nice that Mistress Factory obviously dodges your own Damnation. And the sideboard, we'll talk a little bit about that later, and we'll talk about some of the spicier things we have in here coming up next. Okay, so let's talk about the one ofs that we got to Tutor for. Um, one of the nice things about uh, obviously uh, uh, Urborg and Coffers, you can produce a ton of mana. And uh, there's actually quite a few good things to do with a ton of mana. A lot of this actually drew upon from when I was playing mono black decks a lot, like in Commander. Um, yeah, so first first and foremost, we'll start off with uh, Karn. So Karn sort of alleviates, A, it's just more, more um, uh, hate, right, for uh, permanents that you can easily deal with, like enchantments or artifacts in the main deck, right? So that's nice. Of course, it's you can plus to, to nuke their hand, which is, again, can be much better here because we already have a lot of hand disruption, and then after that, you can just start exiling stuff. So that's pretty sweet. Of course, we don't have Gristlebrand in Commander, uh, but we do have it in Modern, and this card is pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. I mean, it's hard to, to, to get a better top end without getting something that's like a little more niche. Because um, this is probably about as good as you're going to get for like just all around just good card, right? So this thing is uh, sweet. is really sweet. Yeah, Gristlebrand is, I mean, it's huge. It's got a lifelink. Uh, it flies. It's a bargain on a stick. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's a legitimate win condition that, I mean, just just goes nuts snowballs like crazy after like just being on the battlefield so pretty nuts pretty ridiculous um army of the damned i put in specifically just because it's uh pretty good against counter magic right because obviously like a you know you don't really uh, want to get your stuff countered but uh army of the damned does have a little bit of um resilience to counter magic obviously with its its flashback cost uh, but yeah, basically untapping with this thing means you're probably going to kill him uh, pretty much every time, right? So that's that's pretty good. So it, it is like a one-turn kill kind of thing. And of course, they have to deal with it. And if they don't deal with it, I mean, it, or even if they do deal with it, of course, you can flash it back. And uh, usually at that stage of the game, um, pretty easy, right, with our, our good friend Cabal Coffers. And of course, Grave Titan, just a cheaper all-around sort of like mid-game creature or whatever when you don't have like infinite mana um you can play it uh it's resilient versus removal so this is why we play four also because it's cheap um and it just keeps putting stuff into play it basically kills everything um yeah there's there's uh it, it's hard to get like a, a better top end than something like grave titan um or i should say not better top ends more like kind of a, i don't even want to say mid-range right but it's yeah, it's it's what I mean to say is it's hard to get better than Grave Titan just for any big creature um, in black. I mean these these Titans are still kind of like the the some of the best six mana or even six plus mana creatures in any color, right? Uh, they're pretty pretty ridiculous, pretty absurd. They've all seen a lot of play, with the exception of the blue one, which actually sucks, which is kind of a which actually makes I think the cycle even better because sometimes the blue ones. Uh, always a little bit represented a little bit more than, than some other cards in, in cycles. So Grave Titan, great on offense, great on defense. Uh, Snowball is very hard. So it really puts pressure like on, on them having like, um, obviously a single target removal doesn't, isn't that great because you still have a uh, four, four worth of power um, as well as uh, mass removal is fine. But um, again, you, you, you can get like punished, right? Trying to play mass removal against the deck with, only one good target so again they sit in your hand rot and then wait for you to you know liliana them but anyways 
yeah, so these things all have different purposes, different cards to, to really um, be tutored up. Although, of course, Grave Titan is something you're perfectly fine seeing multiples of. I mean, it's if it comes into play, you already get your value out of it. If they deal with it, typically you're getting value out of it. So real good stuff here. All right, and for the sideboard, um, some of this just kind of, I don't know, again, modern's kind of crazy at the moment, but we do have Arena just against control decks, right? Just as more um, card draw. Uh, Spellbomb is just, seemed like a, a, again, there's, you can play Leyline or something or or um, like Surgical Extraction or whatever, but I like Spellbomb, this is a good one. Um, yeah, just easily deals with uh, any of their stuff. So very good there. And of course it card bobs if you have an extra black, that's nice. Um, disc, again, is just another way to deal with resolve permanents like top deck permanents or whatever that uh, you can't make them discard. So that's sweet. And it doesn't kill any of your planeswalkers, which is also pretty nice. And last but not least, uh, Break the Ice. This card is uh, very, 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 very good against Tron. So early game, it's a sinkhole. Uh, late game, it's a one-sided wrath, basically. Kills, like, <laughs> pretty much every card or every land that they have that's not, like, um, forests. And uh, I'm pretty sure no, no Tron player is going to accidentally play snow-covered lands at this point. Uh, especially now that this card exists. But hey, when that happens, I'm sure that's a good feeling. So yeah, the early game sinkhole, late game one-sided wrath, is, or excuse me, one-sided Armageddon uh, is pretty insane. Especially like this deck can have like hard time dealing with um, Planeswalkers. Most most of the deck isn't really set up to, to do that um, very well. Uh, I, I mean, you can play like you know stuff like Frasca's Contempt or whatever, or Hero's Downfall or whatnot. But um, those are a little little inefficient, a little slow for like what you typically want to do in modern. But that is something, I guess, if if it comes to it. But yeah, Break the Ice, man, this card is sweet. I'm, I'm sure there's other applications too. Uh, if there are any snow decks, you know, uh, laying around, this thing is is gonna gonna be brutal i mean i don't even know what's going on in this art but it is sweet it is real sweet all right so there's all sorts of things you can do with this deck um obviously like well actually maybe i should even back up like half a sec obviously we didn't talk about sudden edict um this card is very sweet i like sudden edict a lot um it's cool it kills stuff uh and it uh they can't do anything in response so I mean, there you go, right? So that's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's some of the stuff is interchangeable a little bit, like I mean, with eliminate or whatever or that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, your removal uh, is mostly just you want to hit the most broadest um, stuff. But I mean, typically, all you really want to do is just kill everything. So it's like if stuff doesn't match up perfectly, it's fine. You can just make them discard it, and then like you just want to kill everything as well. So it's like it's hard for them to really. As long as you sequence properly, it's hard for it to like matter that it's not like another card. But um, splash colors, specifically splash colors, uh, these are things to help us answer things that mono black typically can't. So uh, vindicate is just like the best all around like removal spell for its cost. Um, again, hitting lands is pretty nice. That's good stuff. Uh, and same thing with something like Abrupt Decay hitting artifacts and enchantments, cheap artifacts and enchantments, that's quite good. Um, yeah, so the, these are pretty much worth splashing. Again, splashing is pretty free anyways. Like, again, we're already playing fetch lands. And due to the Ravnica uh, shock lands, these lands already have um, the types of, of uh, swamp, right? So it already powers up... Uh, Cabal coffers pretty easily, so it doesn't put too much strain on your on having to have an Urborg to do anything. So that's good. Um, negate, of course, answers spells on the stack. Obviously, same thing with Disdainful Stroke and Unmoored Ego is more or less about the cheapest uh, cranial extraction of threat, <laughs> cranial extraction effect. Excuse me. Um, so that's pretty nice. But, you know, it just it just kind of depends. It just kind of depends on what we're looking for. But these are all pretty pretty decent cards to, to look at. Um, and the sideboard in general, uh, there's things like Ashiok, which is like a, a tutor slash graveyard hate card in, in one. So that's definitely something to look at. Cursed Totem, of course, is just a nice way to stop 
uh, combos just in general, right? If they say they end up turning company into stupid, you know, Heliod and, and uh, Spike Feeder and stuff. Um, this, this stops it just completely. Uh, again, more different cranial extraction effects, right? Like Necromentia. Uh, different kind of like Pithing Needle effects. That could be nice. Shadow of Doubt, you can get people. Uh, Liliana Dreadhorde General, I guess, if you're just looking for just slamming bombs in like the mid-range or control kind of matchups. That's uh, that's one that will we'll end the game pretty pretty easily, but yeah. Um, I mean, even, even uh, like I said, the, a lot of the deck is kind of set in stone, right? You're going to play like 8 plus discard effects. You're going to play your Liliana the Veils, maybe your Liliana um, uh, the... Uh, 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 sh uh, the other <laughs> three mana Liliana whose name escapes me off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so like a lot of this stuff is like, yeah, I'm going to play Removal, I'm going to play Damnation, I'm going to play, yeah, Coffers or Borg and Swamps and blah, blah, blah. But um, stuff like Blast Zone, again, this could be another option. Like maybe the factories, uh, just the efficacy of Mistress Factory is not that great. Maybe we just want more removal uh, against other random kind of permanents. Blast Zone does this, you know, um, so that's pretty sweet. So there's a lot of different things we can do here. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the deck is pretty nice, pretty simple, and pretty easy to play. Uh, it's, I mean, just kill everything. Just kill everything, get to the late game, slam a Grave Titan, and go to town. I mean, that's that's typically the plan. So yeah, and then of course, uh, late late game, of course, you can refill uh, draw extra cards with Castle Lockthwain, which is pretty nice. Of course, uh, again, sideboard, you can play stuff like... Uh, uh, Phyrexian Arena and, and all sorts of other things. So, who knows? Maybe something like Night Night's Whisper is good. Who knows? Who knows? And of course, if we need more life gain, there's stuff like Tendrils of Corruption. It's four mana, so it's a little expensive, but it is pretty pretty strong. It can give you a ton of life and, and basically um, act like a Terminate in, in the mid or late game. So that's sweet. But yeah. So that's basically it, guys. Uh, Thank you for stopping by. I mean, there's there's not much more to say. It's basically a mono black deck where you just kill everything, and then after you're done killing everything, you eventually kill them with some big stupid thing and putting a million mana into Cabal Coffers and stuff. So that's it. That's it for today, guys. So thanks for stopping by, and have a nice day.